Welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to look at why you should be creating a standard working week and what are the benefits not only to you but also your team and your organization. So quite often you know, your typical working week could look like this where all the days blur into one. Um, your Mondays become your Tuesdays become your Wednesdays and your weekends aren't differentiated from the rest of your working week. If you're lucky, you might have some separation where you've got some kind of uh, difference between your days and the weekends are separated there. But what you're really looking for is this, some nice structure where your days are you know, clearly defined and you have your weekends or your, your rest days, your rest days um, separated from your work days. So that's, that's the goal, what we're trying to work towards. What the benefits? Well, some of the advantages there is when you've got a standard working week, you've got better control. You're able to get more things done because you're prioritised, you've got that clear focus. And once you're very clear on your standard working week, you can share it with others and they'll help you achieve you know, your, your goals to get more things done. And also, the problem there, you can actually have some fun. So you can be, use a bit of creativity, a bit of you know, playful alliteration as we'll come on to and have a bit of fun about why and how you can create a standard working week. So let's look at some examples. Well, for those of you who are familiar with Westminster in London, you'll know that Prime Minister's Questions is every Wednesday at 12 noon. So Wednesdays become the day when the Prime Minister is in the house um, it means that not only him, his cabinet and his backbenchers you know, have to be there, but also the opposition and other you know, interested parties are there at PMQ. Now, when the Prime Minister's there, he's able to schedule his diary and his appointments around 12 o'clock. So he'll have meetings before 12 o'clock you know, with the briefings and, you know, and so forth. And then he'll also have meetings afterwards. But this kind of Wednesday at 12 becomes his, by de facto, that's his standard, that's the start of his standard working week. Now, another example, for those of you who've been to university, uh, certainly in the UK, you'll know that every Wednesday, every Wednesday afternoon is dedicated to sports. Uh, and that not only helps, you know, there's no lectures on Wednesday afternoons. It means that if you're involved in the athletics union, every Wednesday afternoon, not only at your university, but all the other universities up and down the country, are either training you know, to, to perform or are competing against each other on that particular day. Uh, for me, I was rowing at university, so you know, Wednesday afternoons was a given. We'd spend all the afternoon on the water um, or in the gym you know, practicing. Um, of course, there'll be other days, you know, Saturdays and Sundays when we'll be training, but Wednesday afternoon was that, you know, that one day where we were guaranteed that you know, we'd be training. Another example, um, go back in time, a um, match of the day, um, was a fixture in a lot of people's lives. They would you know, you know, leave the pub early just to go home to watch your know, match of the day live on BBC. Um, less so these days, but certainly an important fixture in many people's, or has been an important fixture in many people's you know, diaries. So there are a few examples. Now, where do you start? Well, if you're wanting to create a standard working week, um, we'll come on to some more benefits as well. Where do you start? Well, it's quite simple. It's one day at a time. So pick a day and typically it's a bottleneck or it's a particular day you have issues with or want to sort out and it start with one day at a time. So I'll give you an example. So a number of years ago, I was working in a manufacturing firm and we had a particular bottleneck with a particular part. Um, this particular customer, it was called Pankel and they're big in aerospace and motorsport, you know, high performance cars. And that particular part would you know, come into the factory and go out of the factory. But it would cause, it had the potential to cause big issues for other processes. Um, not necessarily that particular product, but you know, the other processes around it. So it was causing us a lot of headache. And we had this, this, this idea where um, at the time it was coming up, um, you know, Lent and, you know, and, and Pancake Day, well, why not call it you know, Pankle, you know, Pankle Day or Pankle Tuesday? So that's kind of the, the origin. Now, before Pankle Tuesday, uh, we're unfocused in the factory. Uh, there was poor teamwork you know, between departments and in, in, in team. You had a case where typically the loudest customer, not necessarily Pankle, but you know, other customers, whoever was shouting the loudest 
would typically you know, get their order through and would be trying to push the orders through as opposed to you know, pulling orders, so push rather than pull. Um, in terms of QCD, you know, quality, cost and delivery, it was okay, it was, it was satisfactory. Uh, they weren't setting the world alight, you know, but they were, they were okay with it. Uh, but there was a lot of waste. Um, they weren't particularly lean. Um, and that was either waste product, waste time, or wasted effort. You know, there's, there's many times of many types of waste um, you can come across. So that was pre Pankle Tuesday. Now, after we implemented Pankle Tuesday, everybody was a lot more focused in the factory. Uh, we had the teamwork. Uh, every Tuesday, this particular product had to be at a certain process. So regardless of what went on elsewhere in the factory, this was our number one priority. You know, we had to have these components on the laser, you know, the five axis laser. So it created this drum beat in the factory. In terms of delivery schedules, uh, we were able to improve upon delivery schedules and get things into stock. It really helped with delivery and also quality as well. You know, the quality improved because we had this kind of drum beat system going through and there's a lot more focus on, on the parts. And we also, you know, because we're able to reduce, you know, reduce time, reduce waste, we actually reduced our costs as well, reduced our cost base, not just for this particular part, but for other processes. It had knock-on consequences there, you know, you know, you know, added benefits. So that was Pankle Tuesday, a real kind of win-win. Going on from that, we then implemented other particular days and you know, set our production around it. But we started off with this one day, let's start with one day at a time. So here we are, in order to create that standard working week, I would always suggest you start one day at a time. Once you've got that one day you know, in your diary, you can then build upon that and then have a second dedicated day or third day. You can build upon your standard working week. Now, it's very easy to make things complicated and suddenly you want everything thrown in there and trying to have a, a particular set schedule, but you need to be flexible. And to be flexible, you need to simplify things and keep it simple. Once you've got your standard working week or you know, you know, the bones of it, set expectations for others and also for yourself that you're going to stick to this standard working week and share with others. Let them help you achieve your standard working week. I say it's not just about you, it could also be for your team and the wider organisation. So some other examples then. Uh, recently I was working with a client and one of the departments that we're responsible for was the mould office. So a bit of playful alliteration, and we came up with Mold Office Monday. And that was a particular day when I could sit down and have a one-to-one -one with the departmental manager. I would walk through his department and you know, really kind of you know, ex you know, get myself you know, known within that department. So that was my one set day dedicated to that department. Lots of other things were going on, but on Mold Office Monday, that was my priority to get to know, you know and understand the issues with that particular you know, department and how I could help them. CPR Tuesday, well, CPR with the initials of a colleague of mine, and every Tuesday we had a one-to-one. -one. So it became known as CPR Tuesday, or just CPR, and we, know, we knew what each other, you know, we knew what it meant. So a bit, a bit of fun with, with CPR. Um, Wednesday workshops, that's something we're looking to with our new development programme, The Essential Scholar. So every Wednesday, we'll have a workshop. Again, a nice bit of alliteration. We know that you know, workshops are every Wednesday. Uh, what else we got? Uh, film on Friday, <laughs> that helps me. Um, I know that when I'm with 12 scholars, that Fridays are dedicated to either writing scripts, filming, editing, but that's my one day where that is my focus. And you know, I've got to, you know, that helps me get things done when it comes to recording film. GFI Friday, uh, GF, they were the initials of a colleague of mine, and every Friday, first thing, we'd have our one-to-one. -one. Uh, because it was Friday, uh, first thing, we'd have our breakfast. So we'd typically have a, a croissant or a pastry, uh, and we'd make a bit more special, a bit of ceremony around it. Um, again, a bit of a play on uh, TFI. Uh, so we had GFI Friday, and each other, we knew what it meant. One more here, uh, we've got the Sunday Scholar. Well, that's our, that's our weekly podcast and newsletter. Um, it doesn't go out on Monday. You know, it can't go out on a Saturday. It has to be Sunday. And for me, this has absolutely been a lifesaver for if you're, you're having a standard working week and creating you know, 12 scholars and what we're trying to achieve. This here is the first step of our you know, standard working week. It helps us you know, get other things in place. 
So every Sunday, 6 a.m., we know that that has to be, that has to go out. Uh, we've got one more podcast here. Now into 2023, we'll have a new podcast called The Thick Red Line, and that'll go out midweek on a Wednesday, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock noon. So we've got our Sunday Scholar, which is you know, how we're starting. And then we've also got our Thick Red Line podcast, which is an additional one where we can you know, you know, start developing our own you know, standard working week. The Thick Red Line, why is it called that? Well, it's all about you know, how to talk about your poor performance, how we get from poor to satisfactory and how we cross that Thick Red Line. So uh, some other suggestions before we wrap up. Um, really recommend the, the standard working week. It works really well for one-to-ones, um, either for you, you know, within your team um, or, or meetings. You know, it works really well for that. Customer focus, if you're um, either in sales or you're in manufacturing, it can really help you, uh, you know, focus yourself and your team to get things done or focus on a particular customer. You could have a project day where you nominate a day to focus on those particular projects or a certain area or department. Uh, you could have a, an admin day where Fridays, Mondays, or your know, one day in between could be a particular admin day, which is your focus, or half a day could be your admin half day. And then I've also got your know, health and fitness. Uh, you can have your know, Wednesday workouts or fitness Friday. You can have a particular day or days that really help you focus on, that's when I need to do my exercise or you know, do my workout. Um, I've got there, um, no meetings. Um, bit, bit of a caution, um, the, a standard working week works really well when you're trying to achieve something. It doesn't work too well when you're trying to avoid something. So yes, you could try and have a, a no meeting day or a no email day. Uh, my recommendation is you focus on what you want to achieve um, and you know, you know, things will fall into place, if that makes sense. So a few suggestions there. Um, at 12 Scholars, we love to talk about our EGSP framework. Uh, in terms of creating a standard working week, well, we always start with Paul. So what would Paul look like? Well, in my eyes, it would be ad hoc, unstructured. Um, and those days, as we saw before, you know, all kind of merge into one. There's no clear focus. So that's what Paul would look like. In terms of satisfactory, so we're going from, uh, from poor to satisfactory across that thick red line. Satisfactory would, you've got the bones of a standard working week. You've got some structure there um, that, that helps you. Good, well, that's what we're wanting to achieve. So we're moving from, from here to, to here. Good is you've got some, a, a clear focus in your, in your schedule that helps you and it helps others. And excellent is you've got a structure in place. This is in my eyes. You'd have a, a structure in place that really adds value and everybody in your team and wider organization understands that and they buy into it as well. So you've got a level of engagement and involvement that you know, involves others. So that's our EGSP. And to our final action step, how are you going to simplify your working week? Which day or days will you prioritize and why? If we think about some of the benefits, well, you'll be able to get more focused. You'll be able to get more things done. Your priorities will become clearer and you'll have set expectations, not just for yourself, but for others as well. And you can have some fun along the way. Think about that playful alliteration with those words. If you've got any comments or suggestions, then great. Either DM me or you know, put them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. So that's it. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. My name's Bob Buckley. Uh, this has been one of your Tuesday tutorials uh, going forward this tutorial will be uploaded to YouTube every Tuesday. So we'll have our Sunday Scholar, which goes out on a Sunday. We'll have our Thick Red Line, which will be every Wednesday. And we'll also have our Tuesday tutorial, which will be a video similar to this uploaded to YouTube. If you haven't already, then please subscribe. Much appreciated. And I should look forward to seeing you next time.